Hi, this is Ginger from My Sister's Scrapper. Today I have a quick tutorial to share with you today. Um, anyway, I hope it's quick. If it gets too long, I might have to make it in two parts. I had several people ask about showing them how I created my Sweet Day mini album. And I would show you the mini album, but I don't have it. I sent it to a fabulous person, so um, she has it as a gift. So this was the one, I will put the link to that video so you can go check it out, what I'm talking about um, in the description box below, but it was the one where the pages overlapped. It was a gatefold style, but the pages overlapped one another. So there's three pages on each side. So what you're going to need to do for this, uh, the supplies you're going to need are a, obviously, a paper collection, and I went to my hoard vault and I found this lovely crepe paper Emma's shop collection, which I've been hoarding forever, so I will probably use that. You will also need some solid cardstock. You can use either 12 by 12 or 8.5 by 11. Um, in the one that I made, the Sweet Day uh, mini album, I did use 8.5 by 11 because I, I had a whole stack of it and I just wanted to get rid of it. Um, but you will have less waste if you use the 12 by 12, just FYI. You will also need two pieces of 12 by 12 chipboard. And the reason why I say two is because our pages are going to be six by six, so if you want to use a six by six paper pad, it would work fabulous for this or a larger paper collection. Um, because our covers are gonna be a quarter of an inch bigger, they're gonna be six and a quarter, um, you will need two sheets of 12 by 12, medium weight chipboard. You will also need um, some score tape and some regular adhesive. I'm gonna use my APG gun along with that. You will also need your paper trimmer and a scoring tool, a bone folder, some sort of a decorative punch. This is the one I'm going to use, just the Fiskars uh, scallop punch here for the edge. Or you don't, you can leave them plain. You don't have to do the decorative punch. And some type of a corner rounder would be nice. Oopsie. So I will also put all the measurements I'm going to give you in the description box below. So um, I will have them here if you want to jot them down, but they will also be in the description box. So I went ahead and cut all of my papers for you, but I will give you the measurements that you're going to need. You will need for your covers, um, I'm going to use two pieces of eight and a half by 11, and we're going to tape those together to wrap uh, our chipboard. So you will need that as well. Your chipboard pieces will measure For the back, you're going to need a piece that is six and a half by six and a quarter high. You will also need two spine pieces, which are going to be one and three quarter inches wide by six and a quarter. So you will need two of those. And then you will need two front covers, and those are going to be three and a quarter here and six and a quarter high. You will need two of those. So that's how it's going to lay out. So if you do have a sheet, two pieces of eight and a half by 11 that matches your base card stock, you can go ahead and attach those together and that will be enough to wrap your chipboard. So that those are the measurements for your chipboard. So then for our pages, you're going to need Six pieces of solid cardstock that are going to be seven inches by six inches. You're going to need six of those, and you're going to score those a half an inch on both of the on the seven inch side. You're going to put it in your scoreboard, and you're going to score it a half an inch on both sides. And I will show that here in just a second. You will also need six pieces that are six by six. So these two pieces are going to create our pages. And then for our inserts, we're going to need six pieces of cardstock that are going to be cut at five and three quarter inches high by six and three quarter inches wide. And we're going to score at five and a half. And then for our spine or for our hinge system, what we're going to use is um, I'm going to do the hidden hinge by Kathy Orta. And uh, I like it because it's all one piece and I only want to do three on each side. So I kind of manipulated it so I could make it the size that I needed, which is fabulous about her hinge system. So 
you're going to need um, two pieces of your cardstock that matches. It's going to be six inches wide by five and seven eighths tall. Because we want these just a little bit so our pockets will fit right over on top of the hinges. And then I'll give you the measurements for scoring those as well. So first off, let's go ahead and do the actual, I'll show you how to do the pages. So get your six pieces that are six inches by seven inches and get your scoreboard. Go ahead and lay your paper in there on the seven inch side and you're gonna score at I'm going to score mine at six and a half and flip it around and score it again at six and a half. Now you can do a half inch and six and a half, but it's just easier for me. I don't like scoring on this tiny little end here. So do that to all of your pieces. Again, six and a half, flip it around and six and a half. Okay, so once we get that done, we're going to go ahead and fold on done with our scoreboard for now. Fold on all of our score lines. Once you get all those folded, you're going to go ahead and take your score tape and with the folded edges in like this, you're going to put your tape on the inside of, on, these, on both of these half inch flaps right there. And I'm going to use the quarter inch score tape because that's what I have. If you have the half inch, that's fabulous. So again, you're going to take with the flaps folded on uh, upside facing you, you're going to go ahead and put your score tape on both edges, just like so. Then what you're going to do is go ahead and take off the backing and then on your pieces that you cut that were the six by six you should have six of those what we're going to do is we're going to take that piece and you're going to go ahead and line it up and attach it right to the top here and Try to get it as straight as you can. And this score tape is really sticky. So I might do it this way. On the top. And then press it down. So there is your page. We're going to have one side is going to be attached to our hinge and the other side is going to be our pocket. And if you went a little off, like clearly I did, you can just go ahead and take your scissors and trim off the excess. So go ahead and add the score tape to all six of your pages and attach these pockets or these papers right on top of your line. So go ahead and get that done. So there are basically the bases of all of our six our pages and what we're going to do is we're going to have three pages on one side and three pages on the other side and they will they will they will overlap like this one so when you open it up you'll they'll all be stacked on top but one will go this way and one will go this way okay so in order to do that what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create a hinge system. And for this piece, again, you're going to need uh, two sheets of cardstock that match your pages, and it's going to be six inches by five and seven eighths. So get your scoreboard out again. 
And on the six inch side, what you're going to do is you're going to score, your first score mark is gonna be at one and a quarter. The next score mark is gonna be one and three quarters. And then another two and one quarter inches is your next score mark. Two and a half, three, three and a half, three and three quarters, four and a quarter, and four and three quarters. Okay, so do that to both of your pieces. Again, you put it in here on your six inch side, and your first score mark is one and a quarter, one and three quarters, two and a quarter, two and a half, three, three and a half, three and three quarters, four and a quarter, and four and three quarters, okay? So that leaves you with an inch and a quarter on both sides, and then you should have a half, a half, a quarter, a half, a half, a quarter, and a half and a half. So what we're gonna do next is go ahead and we're gonna fold on our score lines. So the easiest way that I found to do it is I score, I fold my first one up, and then I fold my next one up. And then what I do is I skip that next, the, next, the little quarter inch line, and I fold the next line up. So I have a half inch gap. And then I fold my half inch because your half inch is actually your hinge and those quarter inch spaces are your spaces in between your pages. So when you get them folded like this, you're going to fold back on this one on the quarter inch. And then this one again, we're gonna fold back on the quarter inch. And it just takes a little practice. You kind of have to fiddle with it, but it is a fabulous, fabulous binding system. I absolutely love it. So what you want to do is you want to end up so it looks like this. So you have your hinges and then you have that quarter inch space in between the two hinges or the three hinges or two spaces and then your one and a quarter inch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and flip that over once we've scored it. And you're only gonna take your score tape and put it on that one side of the half inch. So I'm gonna put it right here on my first half inch. Skip the next half inch, skip the quarter inch, and then put it again on the half inch. Skip your other half inch, skip your quarter inch, and put it on at the last half inch. And you should have one more half inch space left. So go ahead and burnish your tape. Peel the backing off. And go ahead and attach your hinges together. So you're gonna put the half inch pieces together like this, put the other half inch piece together, and put the last half inch piece together. And it should look like this when you get it finished. Now with this system I have found that you do need to really work your folds. Fold them back and forth and back and forth. So you really want to make sure that you use a cardstock that is not going to tear. So your pages will turn better the more you work your, your folds back and forth. So there's your first hinge. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the other one that we scored. So we're gonna have one hinge on one side and one hinge on the other side. tape to the half inch, skip
skip the half inch and quarter inch, add your tape again to the other half inch, skip the half, skip the quarter, and put it on the next half inch. Now, you could put it on all both all the half inch spaces, but it's not necessary, but you could. So if you get confused about where to put the score tape, just put it on all the half inch ones and you're good. Peel the backing off the first one. And peel the backing off the second one. And the last one. Okay. And there is our hinge. Again, you want to burnish it really good. Work your folds really, really well. Work your hinges back and forth. So there are our two hinges, okay? So the last thing we're gonna make is our inserts for our pocket pages. So go ahead and get your scoreboard. And you're gonna lay it on the six and three quarter inch side and you're gonna score at five and one half inches. What you can do is you can take your decorative punch now and you can go ahead and, if you want, go ahead and punch your edges along the side here and then go ahead and fold on your score mark. You can do the folding first or you can do it second, it doesn't really matter. So go ahead and pick whatever decorative punch you want. I'm going to use just the simple scallop right here. And um, I'm sure you know how to do this, you don't need me to show you, but you just line it up and punch. So there you have it, that's going to be your insert for your pages. Okay, so there you go. We're going to go ahead and stop the video and then on the next video I will show you how to create the cover and add the pages. Thanks for watching. Bye.